I can incorporate into my messages things that will help them and say, oh, I can relate to this. Because if you are activistic, you don't relate to that. Etc. And also, you might discover that, ah, actually, this is what my tertiary title. You never knew that. And the final uh, things don't judge someone else because they have a different pathway than you do. Don't assume that they don't love Jesus, that they don't pray as hard as you do just because they are wired differently. No, they are as sincere, they love Jesus as much as you do, they pray at least as much as you do. They are just different, because they are wired differently. Be willing to engage in activities that move you out of your comfort zone. Once you know who you are, then you can experiment of doing things which is not you, and you will be surprised that at different stages of your life, they bring different blessings to your life. Value and appreciate other times. <coughs> Remember, they are all God's children. So how do we remain in Christ? By knowing which type we are. And then we will bring fruit and everybody else will be blessed. Any questions? Yes? How important is it uh for others in the church to know your spiritual pathway. Why I'm asking that when it comes to choosing church officials, you know I think church officials is more about spiritual gifts rather than pathways. This is about you connecting with God. How do you remain in him? How do I feel closeness to God? Otherwise religion will become a, a form, you know, a, a duty to perform. The form of godliness, but not a, a living relationship. Mm -hmm. So, for spiritual, for offices in the church, it's more spiritual gifts rather than spiritual pathway. And there are different things. Oh. Remember, I said, I said this morning, evangelists have the capacity to put the pulse, the finger on the pulse, and say, oh, "You need to do this," and bring people to decision. Leaders can show you the directions. Gift of mercy can put their arms around and say, oh, sister, that must have been so hard. Tell me more. How did that make you feel? You feel better in just being in their presence. A teacher can never do that. They don't, they don't have any empathy. They can put themselves in the shoes of somebody else. But they can take a complex subject and make it simple. Just divide it into simple steps and say, oh, wow, I've never seen that in my life before. So. Yeah, this is more about spiritual needs. Is he put Mary under activities? No, under contemplative. Martha was under. Uh -huh. Under activities. Mm -hmm. Don't you see how much work there is in the kitchen yeah. to prepare for a rabbi to visit us? Yeah. Of course! Of course nobody else can see all the activities. They see. They, I am pretty sure she had a to-do list what needs to be done. When Jesus is coming to their house, yeah. yeah. it, it, some people just don't have a drawer for that, and some people see because they are wired that way. The same with leadership. Some people have no clue of direction. You ask them, "Where do you go?" Oh, that mountain, and everybody says, "Come on, everybody knows what that mountain." Just um, looking at the biblical examples. You know the situation between uh, Miriam and uh, Aaron and uh, mm -hmm. Moses? With the, with the siblings, Aaron and Moses, would you, I don't know, I mean, they were envious? Yes. Would you deduce that uh, they could be... So they, they knew each other's style. Mm -hmm. Do you remember when Moses yeah. to Moses? Yeah. Don't worry about not being able to speak up, you know, Aaron is already coming and he will be your prophet, he will be your mouthpiece. And uh, so they knew each other's strengths and weaknesses, but sometimes they feel that, ah, why is God using Moses more than us? We want to be in that position as well, and that's where you get into trouble. Now, don't envy somebody else's time. Serve where you are, because your service is important. What Mary did, for women and how she is a role model in his heart and what Aaron did for Moses. I mean, the God says, I put this into the fire and this is what came out of you. 
do you put silver or gold in the fire and a bull comes out? Yeah. Who would believe that? The guy cannot stand up for himself. He cannot be the leader, but he can be an amazing number two, a mouthpiece for someone who is the leader. Uh, we didn't have time to go into this in the lesson. You know, the lesson for Monday today was about bad leaders. Yeah. And who are the bad leaders? Bad leaders are those who put their own needs ahead of the followers. Yeah. So then it becomes about me. <coughs> How does this serve me and promote me? And once the Aaron starts feeling, oh, you know, I don't want to be my Moses, uh, he's out of his place. Get your needs met elsewhere. Because if you get it met from your position, from your service, from your Christianity, it's going to mess up. It's going to be a big mess up. We are not gods. We all have our needs. You need to be aware of them, but you need to make sure they are met. As we say in counseling and to pastors, you know, deal with your demons or they are going to catch up with you. And that is a big mess up. Then the whole church suffers. Get your needs met. Deal with your demons. Yes. There are different things. Well, what I'm thinking is okay. So you have the spiritual gifts to. The spiritual gifts is how you serve. Okay, spiritual type is how you connect with God, most naturally. Yes, yeah, so I'm thinking, okay, so you are a teacher and... That's a gift. And the first one that's... Intellectual. <coughs> that's how you feel closest to God, when you understand something new, when you get a new perspective on God's truth, on God's character, on the nature of church, relationships. So can you be uh, intellectual and not teacher? Sure, sure. Thank you. But if you are a teacher, uh, intellectual will be one of your primary or secondary. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you cannot be a teacher and a worshiping, primary worshiping. That's why some yeah. when you don't do the spiritual pathway, you end up taking careers. That way, when you get into a career, it tends to enjoy it. Yes, and people are blessed. Careers that they don't enjoy, they have the, they earn the money, but they are never happy. Either somebody brainwashed them or massaged them to go into that career, or they thought that this is what will make them happy, but it's not. And all of us had, for example, people who were incredibly knowledgeable, but they could not explain it. You did not become wiser in their presence. You admired them for their encyclopedical knowledge, how much they could store on their computer, but they could not make you wiser. They could not explain it, so you said, ah, wow, so now I understand, now I see how it's connected. <coughs> picture. It's a gift. Oh, sometimes when I preach and you know, shake the hands and people say, the good sister comes to me and says, oh, brother Buddha, thank you so much. I would have never seen that in the Bible. I said, don't worry, sister, God does not expect you to see it. It's a gift of teaching. <laughs> That's not your responsibility. You just do on your pocket what God expects you to do. And your, God does not expect you to see new connections with insight. It's a gift of connecting the dots. It's the same with leadership. Some people mean well, but they have no clue where the church needs to go. There are neurotics who are upset with everything in the world, in the church, and the sense of neuroticism drives them hard, but you can't follow them because you end up in a ditch. Jesus says if a blind person leads another blind, they both end up in a ditch. Is there, is there a way then that the church can help people get to their spiritual pathways? Like you say, you know, there's a few worship, you know, style people. Then the church is going the other direction. 
they are going to suffer. So how can we as a church then let you know, have that? Create an environment where they can use their giftedness and everybody else will be blessed because their, their worship says is going to bless everybody else. Generally, we are not good at creating space for different types of people. Generally, we want uniformity. Everybody needs to be like me. Yeah. You know? And then it's boring. That's why God sends you into a community, so that we can... The diversity is incredibly uh, enriching. Look at British society. I mean, how Britain today is different just because it was able to harness diversity to some degree. Of course, it's a broken society like anybody else, but still, if you compare it with other societies, you know, xenophobia, racism, and other things are incredibly strong in human uh, fallen race because the societies tend to be homogeneous. While Britain, because of the empire, had to be diverse for the last 200 years, so they have 100, 150 years uh, ahead of other societies where they live. You, you see how this church is better and stronger because of the diversity. Yes, Emily? a rich diversity not only in this room but with your people in this country and elsewhere and so often we are ignorant of that unaware and we try to make everybody else look like and do or feel like and do things like we do thinking that then they are genuine followers of Jesus so thank you this afternoon for opening our eyes to see that you all created and wired us differently and I pray that in coming days and weeks all these people can find out how to connect with you better so that all of us can love you more deeply and follow you more zealously and be more sensitive to the needs of others so that we can be a blessing to them here in Doncaster and around Leeds, Wesley and other places and help us to be the type of community you want us to be. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a nice evening. It was a joy to see you again.